Okay, hey there guys, how's it going? Welcome to this video, A History of FTSE Crashes. So, very briefly before we dive into this, the reason why I've done this video is because of the 2020 coronavirus impact on the FTSE and, and the, the wider markets. Uh, and the commentary that I see from investors and traders out there across Facebook groups, Twitter, you know, all the different areas where traders and investors interact. Uh, there is a lot of negativity, a lot of fear out there regarding this recent drop in uh, FTSE value. And I wanted to add a bit of perspective. I've tried to do some other videos on this already on my channel, but I wanted to do a, a, like a presentation, a visual presentation of what I'm trying to get across to people in terms of, uh, for example, today, just today, I saw a post from somebody in an investment Facebook group that I'm part of saying that he's literally sold out all his positions that he's been holding for the last five years. He's just ditched the lot. And he says he's going to wait until the market recovers and comes back up before he gets back in again. I think that if you weren't planning to sell at that time, if you've got like a 10 or 20 year plan, I, you're not looking to sell those shares until 10 or 20 years down the line, then selling whilst they're cheap is the worst thing you can do. And I think a lot of the fear comes from the uncertainty. The fear of, oh my God, I need to sell all my positions now and get whatever money I can get back comes from uncertainty of not knowing if you know this is going to go to zero. And I think that one of the best things that investors and traders can do is study the crashes that have happened before. Now, they don't necessarily tell us what's going to happen in the future, but it can help with reassurance of the fact that the markets recover. And I find it fascinating to look back at previous FTSE crashes and look at how bad they were and how long it took them to recover before they were back to where they were pre-crash. And I think that information, that education for traders and investors will help us uh, navigate these kind of choppy waters, if you will, uh, more successfully because there'll be less fear out there. So that's the point of this presentation. That's where I'm trying to go with it. Whether I succeed or fail, I guess it will come down to uh, the comments underneath. Uh, but let's go through it and, and at least, you know, let's, let's take it with an open mind. So the first place we're going to start is the Black Monday crash, 1987, a long, long time ago now. Uh, what's that, 33 years? Yeah, 33 years. Um, so quite a significant crash, this one. 34.2% drop in value from the start of the crash to its lowest point. So represented here by these purple arrows. This is where the crash started. This is the lowest point that it kind of reached during that crash. Uh, that was a 34.2% drop. And this purple marker up here represents the point at which it reached the pre-crash value again, the, the point of recovery. Um, obviously, you know, in investment and trading terms, this is all a, p a period of recovery. It's recovering, but... Uh, I'm recognizing here the moment that the price reached the pre-crash price. And that took 651 days to fully recover. And I don't think that's too bad. I mean, if we're looking at a 5, 10, 20 year plan strategy, whatever it might be, I appreciate many intraday traders out there, many short term traders out there that are trading and don't hold for anything longer than a few months or a couple of years. But if you are a long term investor, and these are the guys I'm kind of pointing towards at the moment and, and, and presenting this to, I guess, uh, if you've got a 10, 20 year plan, then when these crashes happen, having to wait essentially two years is really not a big deal. Of course, we're going to make money on the way back up as well. If you continue to buy once it's reached its low and it's starting to recover and it's starting to look like, OK, maybe we're on our way back up now. And then you continue to start buying again and getting into the market. Well, you can make a ton of money on the way back up, of course. So you don't necessarily wait until it's reached the pre-crash price before you start buying again. 
you'd be buying on the way up and you'd be making a ton of money in that process because obviously the market eventually recovers back to its pre-crash price. But very interesting that it's only taken two years to get there after the Black Monday crash of 34.2%. That's what the, the kind of message I want to get across there. It take two years to recover. In 1989, we had a 16.3% crash. Uh, and this was uh, this point here. And down to this lowest point here was a 16.3% drop in value. It took 113 days to recover. Now, the, the days to recover, I'm talking about from the start of the crash to the end of the crash. I'm not necessarily talking about the low point here. So 113 days from here to here. I mean, we're talking about, what's that, a couple of months, six months, maybe four or five months before the recovery there. So this is interesting. This isn't a famous crash as such, the 1989 drop in value. Uh, but I wanted to throw one in there that was about 16, 15 percent in drop in value because these happen more often than you probably think. Uh, and with the coronavirus outbreak right now, it'd be interesting to kind of compare where the coronavirus drop in value is at the moment compared to this may give you an indication of how long it may take the markets to recover but with a 16.3 percent drop in value it took 113 days so essentially what's that three months four months tops then we've got the 2001 september 11 attacks uh, i remember exactly where i was on this day and i'm sure many of you guys do as well it was quite a uh, eventful day and uh, something that most people had never seen before. Uh, we suffered, or the FTSE suffered, a 34.9% drop in value. And this was, again, from the September 11 attack, because this was instant. The moment those attacks happened, the market started to fall. Uh, and all the way down to its lowest point. So that's a 34.9% drop in value from the start to its lowest point. And from the start to the point where it recovered, it was a hundred. Uh, sorry, one thousand two hundred and forty-nine days. So it was essentially about four years. So this was quite. I mean, this was hugely significant. Uh, it's a what? First of all, it's a massive drop in value. We're talking about thirty-five percent drop in value. So that's pretty big, big deal. Uh, but it took four years before the FTSE got back to where it was before. Now. I don't think four years is too bad considering the impact of the September 11 attacks and the impact that it's had on the market and the fact that it's knocked it down by 35% in value and it still only took four years before it was back to where it was and not long after that it far surpassed that price as you can see I mean the market then went on and, and started growing much much faster but again had we bought during this recovery we would have made a ton of money we would have been making a ton of money back uh, and by this point our pre-crash stocks would have gone back to their original value that they were pre-crash but in the interim we've been buying a ton of stocks good quality stocks on the way back up and making more money so it's not like we have we've had to wait four years before we can make out any money again we've been actively busy on the way back up right but again, interesting that such a significant impact on the, e the economy and on the stock market uh, still only took four years to recover. And I'm putting this in there again for perspective so we get a full picture of what these crashes are like and how long they have taken to recover. Then we've got the 2008 subprime mortgage crisis. So again, we're, we're only 10 years ago now. Uh, and this was a 33.5% drop in value so not far off the September 11 attack uh, value drop uh, which was just shy of 35% this is 33.5% and again this is from the start of that period which has a specific start date based on uh, if you go to uh, Wikipedia and type in FTSE crashes uh, or stock market crash dates uh, the, the stop subprime mortgage crisis was considered to have started on this particular date um, and from the start point to the lowest price during this period, it fell 33.5%. It took 393 days to recover, so a little over a year. 
So let me again put that into perspective. The 2008 subprime mortgage crisis, it hit the markets hard. Many, many people lost everything they had. I know investors that lost millions and had invested in golf courses uh, and, and property on golf courses. And the, 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 the property was rendered worthless to them. You know, it, it, it ruined lives to, to a certain degree. Yet the stock market, just a little over a year after it happened, had fully recovered. So we were talking a year. Now, again, if you're a 10 or 20 year long term investor slash trader. And you've only got to wait a year for this to recover, it would therefore seem rather foolish to sell out all your positions and close everything in the panic and fear of the fact that the stock market has fallen. Off the back of a very, you know, very significant event. And you can imagine, and I'm sure it did happen, many, many traders closed out their portfolio during this crisis and, and bailed. But had they just had, they only had to wait a year and everything would have been back to where it was before. Do you see my point there? That's the perspective that I'm trying to get across here is that all they had to do was wait 393 days before it went back to where it was pre-crash. And also in the interim of that time, so across that year, fantastic buying opportunities on the way back up and then in 2015 we've got the US and China stock market crash so looking this up online uh, this was brought up in the in the same list of stock market crashes uh, it was it's known as the US and China stock market crash I'm not entirely sure why it happened uh, I haven't gone into a great amount of detail of research as to why these events happened, but this is what it's been labelled as apparently. Uh, and this was a 20.9% drop in value. Again, this is the date that it's been credited as the start. It's fallen all the way down here to its lowest point of 20.9% drop in value. And it's recovered and come back up to here. And it's taken 488 days to get there. So we're looking at about a year and a half to get there from a 20 point drop in value and once again as I say so you've only got to wait a year and a half before it's recovered also some fantastic buying opportunities uh, not only on the way down but on the way back up and uh, and so 2018 quite recent the global stock market downturn uh, this was the year that I actually ended up losing money uh, this was one of the, the only years of my investing years that I actually took a loss. Uh, it was about a, a minus 6% loss in the value of my portfolio, uh, which uh, was better than most of the indexes suffered. Uh, it wasn't too bad. But um, yeah, it was a 13% drop in value at its lowest point from here all the way down to here. And it recovered after 201 days. So after 201 days, it was back to where it was. And that was about mid-2019. It fully recovered. So again, not even a year to recover from that 13% drop. Which I find quite fascinating. Because again, had investors been ditching their portfolios and selling everything off to recover what cash they have left. Had they just waited essentially what best part of nine months everything would have been back to where it was pre-crash and they wouldn't be any worse off in fact they'd be better off because they would have been buying probably in the interim at much cheaper prices and then in 2020 we've got the coronavirus outbreak so far as of today at the time of recording uh, I can't even tell you today's date I don't know today's date off the top of my head let me get my phone it's the 27th of February crikey it's the 27th of February, Thursday the 27th of February, since Monday the markets have been in free fall. At the moment we're down 9.5% and we're only a few days into this. My point and the kind of the perspective I'm trying to get across here to people is that if you are selling everything out right now, I think that's a bad move. If you're a long term trader, you've got a 10, 15 or 20 year plan, i.e. in other words, you weren't planning to sell in any of these positions unless their financials suddenly started turning bad and they suddenly started turning into bad companies. Your plan was to hold these companies for 10, 15, 20 years and you've abandoned 
that approach out of fear of the fact that the market's falling. You're watching your, pro I mean, all the comments I'm seeing online are people saying, I'm watching my profits disappear. Should I close all my positions now? What do you guys think? That sort of stuff. My honest answer is, listen, if you've got a 5, 10, 15, 20 year plan, stick to it because the markets recover. Now, it might take us six months to recover from this. It might take the markets a year to recover from this. And when I talk about recover, I'm talking about going back to the pre-crash value of about 7,500 on the FTSE 100. Uh, you know, we might have, might have to wait two years before it gets back up to that point. And so all the positions you're holding right now will not be back at the original value for another two years, let's say. I'm completely guessing here. I don't know. But obviously, in the interim, we're able to buy fantastic companies for much cheaper prices whilst we wait for it to get there. And I think it's a very bad idea for people to just be ditching their entire portfolios and waiting for the price to go back to its pre-crash value before they even start buying again. I don't think that's the right strategy. And I think that knowing this information, knowing this data, and feel free to go back through this video and relook at those slides that I've just shown you. I think it's very useful for investors to see this information, to fully be, f to be familiar with these events and knowing how the markets have recovered, how long it's taken the markets to recover, how large those crashes were in relation to how long they took to recover. And the fact that they all recovered from all of those events, the markets have recovered in the last 33 years. Whatever has been thrown at the stock market and caused major crashes, the stock market has always recovered and it's never taken longer than four years to get there. And in the interim, there have been fantastic buying opportunities to be able to buy fantastic companies at cheaper prices, which, you know, it's those periods that can make you a ton of money. So by the time the price has reached the pre-crash value, you've already made a ton of money over those, over that year or the two years or even the four years that it's taken the markets to recover. That's the message I'm trying to get across. Hopefully it makes sense. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you disagree, please disagree in the comments. Let me know what you think. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to help people. I'm trying to help investors who are panicking, who are allowing the fear to influence their decision making, which is always a bad thing. Allowing your emotions to take over and to dictate your decisions often results in the wrong decision being made. We need to be logical here. And I think this is a logical process to look through previous crashes, to understand what's happened in the past, because I think that will help dissipate some of the fear the fear of, I need to bank now, I need to get my cash back now before I lose it all, knowing that the markets only take up to five years to recover in all those previous massive events. You know, September 11 was a massive event. Knowing that information, I think we can make more informed, more positive, more optimistic decisions in our investing. I hope it's been useful, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me a like if you have enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys again soon. Cheers.